Hi everyone and welcome to Drawing with Lua in the Canvas node. Today we're going to be recreating this meter in Audulous with the Canvas node using a scripting language called Lua. If you've never programmed before, this is an excellent tutorial to start with because we'll be explaining everything from the ground up and I'll be going slowly step by step. Okay, so let's first off delete this and we're going to create a Canvas node here and immediately you see a little shape here drawn with a gradient, but we're going to pop into the inspector panel here and delete that. And the first thing you'll notice is as soon as I delete that, the canvas node immediately responds. There's, you don't need to click any buttons to have it render what you have um, in the code on the screen. As long as you have valid code in here, it will immediately render it in the canvas node. That's really um, cool aspect of the way this this works because you get that immediate visual feedback that uh, is really essential in learning anything. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go down here and we have a whole list of all of these functions uh, and all of these, these various things that you can uh, do with this canvas node. But we're going to narrow it down just to a couple today. We're going to use fill rectangle and we're going to use paint. Okay. So, whoops. I'm going to make a little space here between these. Now, uh, the first thing we're going to do is set a color for the paint. And what we're doing here is we're declaring a variable. This uh, variable, which is a word here, we say paint, we're going to change it to white because we want this color to be white. Now, this color paint part here uh, sets these R, G, B, and A values between 0 and 1, where 0 is dark, uh, and one is completely bright, uh, I want to set them to make it white. So going through deleting these values and adding 111 for R, G, and B. And then the A, which is the uh, transparency value, I'm going to set that to one. Uh, so it's totally opaque. And now we have our white color here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and drop that into where it wants a paint value here. So white. And we still don't see anything yet because we need to give the fill rectangle a uh, coordinates to how big to draw this rectangle we want. What I'm going to do first is set the uh, minimum value, uh, the minimum value for the x and the y coordinates to be 0, 0. And I'm going to put that in a curly brace. So we go 0, uh, 0. And then we have a maximum value here. And let's set that to 100 and 100. And for the corner radius, we're just going to set that for, to zero for now. Right, so there it is, a white square. Now, uh, we can change these values independently of each other. So I could say this is the x value, and we have that to be 200, and that makes it a little easier to see now what's going on with these coordinates. So we have zero, zero, that's this point down here, and then 200 over this way, and 100 up this way, 200 and 100 is the other point that the square is being drawn from. So it's kind of, you can imagine this window where it's coming in and out with these two uh, coordinates, uh, these two coordinates defining the outside edges of the square, uh, the rectangular square. Now we can adjust the quarter radius, so we could have it be like 10, and you can see that rounds off the corners there, right? Um, I'm going to set this back to zero for now. Uh, we can change the color. If we want here, we'll create another variable using this, but we're going to change the variable to make it black. And now you see what happened here. This I, ha I didn't change the variable name yet, and yet it changed here because even though we have white declared here as 1111, we redeclared it again. Uh, as something different here. So whatever you can, this, this is something you need to look out for, is that whenever you have a variable that's declared twice, the, uh, the one that's further down in the code will, be, will take precedence over the other one. Uh, and so when, when it's referring to this, it's looking back here and referring to this line, not this line. So I'm going to rename this as black, and you can see immediately it jumps back to here because this no longer is a white variable but I can rechange it. I can change it again here and change it back to black. Now, once again, I'll do this and make one for red. 
because that's going to be the color of our meter. And remember, it was RGB, so we're going to set red R to 1. I'm going to set it to red. Okay, so now we have our red uh, rectangle. And if we have the the rectangle, we're thinking we want a meter, so it's kind of taller. Uh, we'll say it, let's say it's 100 by 10. Whoops, oops, <laughs> I got that mixed up in my head. 10 by 100, right? And we can set the size directly like this, or again, we can use a variable. So we have height equals 100 and width equals 10. And we can plug this in here, width and height, right? And now I can do something like this, where I, if I want a taller meter, I can just uh, go to height and adjust how tall the meter is. And although I could go here and set it directly, this is a little easier to think of. Okay, well, I'm looking at this. This is the script for creating this, this little meter. And here I can just go up at the top and, and have these height and width variables declared first. So uh, we don't need these variables, so I can clean that up and get rid of that. Um, and so what I want to do to say like, uh, I, I want to have modulation coming in that will move that meter, right? So I need an input that's coming in from modulus. So I'll do mod as an input and I press return and it creates an input there. And well, I need an LFO again and I can plug that LFO into this modulation input, but it's not doing anything. Why? Well, I've declared this uh, input here, it's created the input, but I'm not using it anywhere here. What I can do though, is I can use mod here and then times 100, and there you go, you have your meter. It's responding to the LFO, you can do it faster or slower, and what that's doing is it's taking this zero to one modulation signal and multiplying that by the overall height of this, this rectangle that we have. And so when it's at zero, it's at zero. When it's at one, it's at 100. And so that's how it's creating this up and down. If you, you can see, I could even switch this around and do mod, and then it's going on the x-axis. But obviously we don't want this kind of behavior. We want this, right? So now that's all you need to know to create a meter, but we're gonna take it a little step further and go a little bit um, more advanced. And what I'm gonna do is create a function out of this so I can create a couple meters on this one canvas node, right? So I say I have two LFOs and I want this other one to come in too. So I could do mod and then mod uh, two as a second input. And then I have these two LFOs and one's going fast and one's going slow. I can't see the fast one yet because I haven't drawn a rectangle for it yet. What I wanna do though, is instead of just doing this again and repositioning it, because what I could do is I could go here and then I would have to you know, have a different height and width. Um, uh, and and if I want it to move over, I would have to say like, be this be like 20 and zero and then width plus 20, right? That's, that's one way to move this, this Net new rectangle over so that it's doing something different, but uh, I want to make a function so that it is more uh, reusable and repackable. So uh, just this is a little visually distracting to me at the moment, so I'll pop that out. What you need to do to create a function is use this uh, keyword called function, right? And you can see it immediately turns a different color. That's because it's a reserved keyword uh, that that you're saying I am. You're, you're telling the program I'm declaring a function here. So that means you couldn't you couldn't uh, create a variable called function. You'll get an error uh, because you want it to be a, um, a variable. So right. okay. So we have function, and then functions. Uh, you, I like to do this immediately after I create one, just so you don't forget. You want to uh, declare the function between function and end. So everything that comes in between it is the function. First thing we have to do is name the function. I'm going to do draw underscore uh, rectangle. And for now, we'll just we'll create these parentheses and we'll talk about that in a second. I'm gonna copy and uh, I'm gonna actually cut that and put that in here. Put a little tab in there. It's not, uh, you don't have to do that, but it makes it a little visually easier to see. And we're gonna do draw, uh, whoops, sorry, draw rectangle. 
I, and that's how you call the function. Um, so I need, because I have this mod here, let's just take that off, and now it's 100. So I just called this function. If I, un, if I don't call it, it's not gonna draw. And if I call it, it draws, right? This is a way you define the function, and this is how you call the function. Uh, these parentheses here are a way for you to pass variables into your function from uh, uh, global variables or, or from, uh, from variables that you want to pass directly into it because we want to make two different ones, right? And we want to space them out differently from each other. So uh, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to do, uh, to, to set the variables here, I'm going to do width and height and color and so now it, it's expecting me to have these variables separated by commas so that I can pass them into the function. So I can do width, height, and uh, color. And what I want to do is red, right? And width, whoops, height, there we go. You can see, that's another, that's like I'm saying, there's, it, it immediately, it's not drawing, it's not giving me an error, but I'm wondering, okay, what is going on here? And I look and I say, okay, I misspelled that. You need to spell things exactly correctly. The computer doesn't know autocorrect, right? So width, height, and red. Now, uh, what I want to do is create a second one. That's a height two. And actually, we'll share the same width, so I don't need to redeclare that. So we'll do height two. That's just so we can see that it's different. 150. And I'm going to copy and paste this again. We're going to draw a second one that is 100 uh, height two. Right? And so immediately that pops up, it's higher. But they're at the same origin point. They're being drawn on top of each other, basically. Right, So they're both starting from here. We need to move it over so that these don't overlap. How do we do that? Well, what I can do is go on here and do the translate. Oops. Uh, we're translating the coordinate system. Okay, So in between these two, I want to translate the coordinate system. We're going to keep the y uh, coordinate the same, but we're going to move the x coordinate, move the x coordinate over by 20. Right? So in between these two, I've translated the entire coordinate system that it's using in this node over by 20, and then now it's starting to draw from here. So this. This is the zero, zero origin point up until this translate happens, and then this becomes the zero, zero origin point, right? Because if we look at the function, this is still drawing at zero, zero. Uh, this translate, what that does is it takes this kind of global variable, uh, the, the global coordinate system, and moves it over. But this isn't the best practice that you want to do, uh, because if I was drawing even more rectangles, I'd have to like be putting uh, more of them in between, so I could do, you know, do this again, right? Uh, it's an inefficient way, and so what I should do is is pack this function into this, uh, pass the, pass this into this other function, uh, and that way, oops, I'm going to copy and paste this. That way, I can use this as uh, an argument that I pass to here. So what I want to do is do translate x and y, and then have those as arguments that I pass in here, x and y, so that later I can change it to 10, uh, 20, right? Or 40, 50, right? I can move it up and, and around on the canvas like this. Um, but you'll run into something here if, I, if I'm doing this and we're doing 10, and uh, now this is 20. If, if I have 10 here, these should be, you would think, these, are, these would be on top of each other, right? But no, what happened was is it translated, and then now this 10, 0, this is the new uh, origin point, so this getting translated over by 10 is from this point and not from this point over here. What we want to do is use a little extra step here, which is the save uh, and restore. So we do save and restore. And what that does is it saves the, uh, the translate state before that gets called. 
and then it translates everything, it does all these translation functions, and then it creates the square, and then it restores it back to what the um, coordinate system was before you translated it. And this way, now you, you see as soon as I put that restore there, if I take the restore out, uh, it's still over here, but if I put the restore in, they're now being rendered on top of each other. So I, again, need to push it out 20, 30, uh, to see both of them at the same time. So, to recap, right? I've created this function, the draw rectangle, you can pass in a width, height, and color argument, and they're positional, right? So we can have width, height, and red here, and then x and y at the very end, which shows where it's being drawn. So I wanna do it at 10 and zero here. Well, let's start actually do zero, zero, and then let's do 15, so they're a little close to each other, zero. And I want to also um, do height two, height two equals 100, uh, 100 times mod two, and then we're gonna do this times mod, and I wanna do height two here, and sync these up, right? And so we've just created two meters side by side in the canvas node. They're, in, they're working independently from one another, uh, we are using these global vari variables here to interact with the incoming modulation signal that's changing the height uh, variable for both of these. There's you know, the first meter and the second meter, and they both share this width, uh, um, excuse me, this width variable. Uh, they both share the red variable because they're both red. Uh, and we have a function that's declared here that allows you to pass in the with the height, the color, and then the xy position of the meter. So that when I call this function again, I don't have to repeat all of this code twice, I can just do draw a rectangle with the width, height, the color, and the position. I can do this uh, again, I can create another one that is 35, or 30, and we could even add a mod three, right? And then I could just easily go here, mod two, height, three, mod three, height three, and we can create another LFO, and there. And see how quick that is? If, you're, if you can work with functions like this, you can really quickly build up a UI for whatever you want. So let's say you have a graphic equalizer or something you want here, and you want to use, uh, you say, uh, go to, let's see, module, and you have a slider. And so you have a slider and you want to you know, reflect the slider positions in a meter here. Uh, you can do that very easily with the canvas node. Um, what we'll be exploring in future tutorials is a little more in depth about these different functions. So right now we just learned draw a rectangle, but there's stroke rectangle, stroke bezier, um, Stroke, there, there's circles, arcs, there's lots more to discuss, but for this tutorial, we'll just leave it here, uh, and that's enough to, for you to kind of chew on. And if you need to, watch the tutorial over again, uh, and if, uh, nothing, if, if things aren't clear to you, please let me know, and I can help you explain to you in the comments, uh, either on YouTube or in the Discord. Uh, this, this is, for me, coding is new for me too, so, um, I, I know that it can be really overwhelming at first to uh, learn all of this stuff, but I'd like to think that if you just followed along with and understood this tutorial and how much I, I, I gave to you today, to be able to uh, reproduce this on your end, you know, you know, up to like chapter five of a lot of um, tutorials that you would see on YouTube, but you're getting uh, started really quickly with the ground running with Audulous because you get this instant feedback from what you're doing in the, uh, in the program itself. So I'll leave it there for now, but please let me know if, uh, if you had a, uh, if it was easy to follow along with this, if it's not, you know, welcome the feedback. Um, and I'll, I'll be doing more tutorials as we go on to get more and more complex things uh, in the future. Okay, thanks a lot.